Greetings to viewers of NLTV News Now. I'm Rinki Gogoi and let's begin with the headlines. The Yimkyung community under the aegis of Yimkyung Tribal Council organized a peaceful rally demanding for upgradation of Shamator ADC to full-fledged district headquarters was held on Thursday at Public Ground Shamator and Public Ground Pungro. The chairman of Ura village colony, Temsu Ao, explained that the fire broke out due to a short circuit and more than 250 houses were gutted down and still more counting. He also accused the fire departments of irresponsible and urged them to be more responsible in the near future. Prime Minister Narendra Modi visits Varanasi in Polbound Uttar Pradesh and laid foundation stones. Prime Minister Modi also inaugurated 22 development projects worth Rs 870 crores in Varanasi ahead of the 2022 Uttar Pradesh Assembly elections. Congress plans to launch agitation against the centre in January over rising unemployment and privatisation. The Agitation Committee of the party held a meeting earlier on Wednesday. Congress party is building strategies to attack the central government on the issues of unemployment, privatization and inflation. The UN Secretary Security Council on Wednesday unanimously adopts a U.S. proposed resolution to help humanitarian aid reach desperate Afghans while seeking to keep funds out of Taliban hands. The resolution is a first step by the UN after months of wrangling over how to avert a humanitarian catastrophe amid economic meltdown in Afghanistan. News in detail. The Yimkyum community under the aegis of Yimkyum Tribal Council organized a peaceful rally demanding for upgradation of Shemator ADC to full-fledged district headquarter. The rally was held on Thursday at Public Ground Shamator and Public Ground Pungro. The Yimkyum community in general have been demanding a des separate district headquarters since 2003 to which the government paid no heed to the cries and pleas made by the community. In Pungro, a brief program was conducted at public ground where speakers from different organizations expressed strong resentment against the state government over not fulfilling the aspirations of the Yim Kyung people to live under one district administrative headquarters. Thousands of Yinkyung public clad in traditional attire, holding placards under Pungro subdivision, participated in the rally and submitted the representation to the district administration Pungro. In Shamator, a brief program was held where the Vice President YTC R. Kyuju led the program. Following the unfortunate fire incident that ravaged Ura Villa Colony yesterday around 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., the NLTV team went down to the premises of the incident to take a report of the occurrence. The team interviewed a victim who grieved that everything got burned in the fire, including her daughter's documents. The chairman of Ura Villa Colony, Temsu Ao, explained that the fire broke out due to a short electrical circuit and more than 250. 50 houses were gutted down and still more counting. He also accused the fire departments of irresponsible and urged them to be more responsible in the near future. The youth president of Ura Villa, David Lee, mentioned that a relief camp has been set up for the fire victims and also appealed to the public to come forward and help the victims in any possible way. Arbachide, Ito Korjola Dole, Kiman Korjola, Itia, Isisman Amigan Soap, Ito Titildo, Luigina, Itia, House Owner Kanto Soap, Madigina, Taikan Laga, 
ঘর কান্তিক নাম্বার কিনা কিনে সব ডিটেল তো লোক না এখন এটা রেজিস্টার দিয়ে এন্ট্রি করে আছে তো টু হান্ড্রেড ওপর দিয়ে এটা এন্ট্রি করে আছে আর বেশি পাকি আছে এন্ট্রি করবলে তো ইট উইল বিকাম এরাউন্ড টু হান্ড্রেড ফিফটি নট লেস দেন টু হান্ড্রেড ফিফটি হব এটু হব এই হাউস হোল্ড কেলে মানে এই টিক্সটি থাকা তো হলে ঘর তো ছোট ছোট করে না এই তো চিমটি লাগা ঘর নিচে না এনেকা থাকা আছে এইটো পর মানুষ লাগা তো এই নাম্বার তো এনেকাই উঠি বলে ওলাই এটা করে না এই একটা আছে তারপিছতে হলে এই তো ঘর জ্বলা টাইমটি হলে মানুষ চকম করা মরিয়া তো হলে থাকা নাই এই তো একটা খুশি কথা তো এই একটা আছে তারপিছতে সেকেন্ড হলে এই তো ফাইয়ের প্রকৃত তো আছে আই কে তো হলে তাইখান লাগাবি অল্প তো হলে তারা তারি হওয়া বড়া হব না কি কালতি তো আছে কেলে মানে কোম্বা তো হলে এই তো পাইপ পি থাকা নাই আর কোম্বা লাগা তো হলে এই চুইন করলে বে ওয়াশের তো ঠিক নয় কিনা পানি তো প্রেসার দিলে এনে খুলে যায় এনেকা করে না বেশি তিরি রখা টাইম দিয়ে কোম্বা আই কিনা এফালে পোটাই আছে হলিবি এনেকা করে কিনা চুই রক্ষি রখা বলে থাকা তো ঠিক টাইম দিয়ে রখাব না পারে কিনা আমলা নাম তো ডেভিড লি আছে ওরা বিলা ইউথ প্রেসিডেন্ট ও আজি আমা খান আজি এনেকা বসি দে ঘর জুলি কিনে দুঃখ করি না থাকা আমার রিলিফ কেম এতে খুলে না থাকা আমি রিকোয়েস্ট করবো মন থাকা তো গার্মেন্ট খান হবি কোন হবি আহি না মরম করে আমার বস্তি দে দুঃখ করি না থাকা মানুষকে মত করলে ভাল আছে কিলে মানে আমা খান ঘর জুলি তো A dumper truck collided with a car in Sudikong, Mukokchung district on Thursday, December 23. As per sources, both the drivers have been injured. The incident occurred when a dumper truck loaded with stones accidentally collided with a car. Moreover, the people who gathered nearby the incident helped the injured drivers and also blamed the truck driver for his carelessness. Moreover, a detailed report is awaited on this incident. The Tripura University has sent a proposal to the Ministry of Human Resource Development and the University Grants Council for introducing diploma courses in Japanese, Korean, Nepali and Manipuri languages. The Tripura University, a central varsity, has urged the MHRD and the UGC to approve their proposal so that the diploma courses in these four languages can be started from the next academic session. The university has also stated that it is a mulling introduction course in these languages as there is a growing trend among students in India to learn foreign languages. The proposed diploma courses in Japanese, Korean, Nepali and Manipuri languages will be of one year duration. The Tripura University said the proposed courses and respective departments will start in a phased manner. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday laid foundation stones and inaugurated 22 development projects worth Rs 870 crores in Varanasi ahead of the 2022 Uttar Pradesh Assembly elections. According to the PMO, Modi laid the foundation stone of Banas Dairy Sankul at the UP State Industrial Development Authority Food Park Karkhiao, Varanasi. The Prime Minister also laid the foundation stone for the biogas-based electricity generation plant for the Milk Producers Cooperative Union plant. Furthermore, Prime Minister Modi launched a portal and logo dedicated to the conformity assessment scheme of milk products. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister also inaugurated several urban development projects in the city including six projects of the redevelopment of old Kashi wards 
a parking and surface park at Beni Benia Bag, beautification of two ponds, one sewage treatment plant at village Ramna and provisioning of advanced surveillance cameras at 720 locations under Smart City Mission. चौधरी चरण सिंह जी की जन्म जयंती है मैं उन्हें आदर पूर्वक श्रद्धांजलि देता हूं उनकी स्मृति में देश किसान दिवस मना रहा है साथियों हमारे यहां गाय की बात करना गोबर धन की बात करना कुछ लोगों ने ऐसे हालात पैदा कर दिए हैं जैसे कोई गुनाह कर रहे हैं गुनाह बना दिया है गाय कुछ लोगों के लिए गाय माता है Amid the emergence and spread of the Omicron variant of COVID-19, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will hold a meeting to review the pandemic situation in the country on Thursday. According to the Prime Ministry, 213 cases of Omicron variant of coronavirus have been reported in the country so far. Out of these, Delhi topped the list with 57 confirmed cases, followed by Maharashtra 54 cases and Telangana 24 cases. Meanwhile, Union Health Ministry on Tuesday alerted states and union territories about the new COVID-19 variant Omicron and said that the that based on current scientific evidence, Omicron is at least three times more transmissible than the Delta variant. The ministry further added that greater foresight, data analysis, dynamic decision-making and strict and prompt contain containment action is required at the local and district level. The Congress on Wednesday said that Narendra Modi government's conduct in Parliament was not good for democracy, accusing the centre of violating rules and tradition, disallowing debate on key issues and passing bills without due process. It said Parliament's winter session, which abruptly ended a day before the scheduled Thursday closure, had an undemocratic start with the debate, last repeal of the farm laws and an undemocratic and with the railroading of the bill that allows Aadhaar linking of the electoral rolls. While the Lok Sabha ran smoothly during the winter session, the Rajya Sabha was doomed to turmoil by the suspension of 12 opposition members, which the Congress on Wednesday described as a ploy to conjure an artificial majority for the government. The Yogi Adyanath led Uttar Pradesh government on Wednesday ordered an investigation into reports that relatives of BJP leaders and government officials allegedly bought land near the upcoming Ram Temple in Ayodhya. The UP government has sought a report within a week and the matter will be investigated by Special Secu Secretary Revenue. The Congress on Wednesday demanded answers from the Prime Minister Narendra Modi into these allegations and said the matter should be thoroughly probed. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi led the party's charge, saying on Twitter that Hindutva robes under the guise of religion. Leader of opposition in Rajya Sabha Malik Arjun Karge also sought to raise the issue, but as he stood to speak, the House was adjourned, saying die.
Five people have been injured and two others died in a bomb blast incident that occurred in Ludhiana on Punjab on Thursday afternoon. The explosion took place in the third story of the court complex when the district court was at function. The police have caught down of the area and fire tenders are on the spot. Meanwhile, more details on this incident are awaited. The Mughal Road connecting the twin districts of Poonch and Jammu has been closed due to heavy snowfall on Thursday. DTI Mughal Road Kasim Ahmed said that the road has been closed in view of slippery road conditions in view of nearly 2 to 3 inch snowfall over the terrain. Following overnight snowfall in the region, the authorities has directed for closure of Mughal Road for all sorts of vehicular traffic till further orders. India conducted the second trial of Pralay conventional ballistic missile of the APJ Abdul Kalam Island in Orissa on Thursday morning. The developmental trail of the missile trial of the missile was successful with the platform reaching a range of 500 kilometers. Pralay is India's first conventional ballistic missile and is an answer to any conventional missile attack from northern or western borders. The missile development is significant as India had no conventionally armed ballistic missile and was hampered by no first use nuclear policy. It is also the first time in history that two tests of conventional ballistic missiles were done successfully on consecutive days. A 30-year-old activist was trashed and tortured by unidentified assailants after abducting him in Rajasthan's Barmer district on Thursday. Nine days after he filed a police complaint against illegal liquor trade and shops in the area, active, activist Amra Ram was picked up while returning home from a bus stand. Ram is under treatment at a hospital in Jodhpur and out of danger. Barmer Police Superintendent Deepak Bhargava said that Ram suffered serious injuries with fractures in his leg and hands. Four police teams have been constituted to nab the assailants. The nationwide alert over Omicron and the approaching holiday season has left multiple states and union territories reporting a particularly recent surge in coronavirus disease cases. Concern over the appropriate measures that need to be taken in order to cut the spread of the virus. The case positivity rate in National Capital Delhi has once again started to rise and in view of this, Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal will be conducting an important review meeting on Thursday to assess the preparedness and management of the highly infectious new variant of SARS-CoV-2 variant, which is said to be capable of undergoing frequent mutations. Delhi police arrested two people for allegedly running a fake website voter ID card e -Bharat Seva, in Uttar Pradesh on Tuesday. The Delhi police arrested two people for allegedly running a fake website and targeting people from all over the country. After the initial enrollment in the fake website, they used to charge payment of Rs 650 online from each person. More than 10,000 persons have fallen prey to the fake website to date. The accused persons have been identified as Ankit Kumar 26 and Manmohan Singh 22 and are residents of Uttar Pradesh. The police also recovered two mobile phones, three checkbooks, some notepads, seven ATM cards from the accused persons. So Uttar Pradesh.
Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Thursday held a review meeting to assess the management amid concerns over Omicron cases and further directed officials to wrap up preparations to tackle any surge. The meeting was attended by Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia, Health Minister, Revenue Minister and other senior officials. Notably, the Delhi Disaster Management Authority has put a ban on all kinds of gatherings and Christmas and New Year in in the national capital in view of the new variant. The meeting also asked that the patient be immediately isolated after a corona test. The meeting also discussed the preparation of a home isolation system for one lakh corona patients. In the past few days, corona cases in the capital have crossed 100 daily with 15,000 to 16,000 medical staff instructed to be prepared to deal with the emergencies. At the same time, Kedriwal also ordered the health department to increase the one-month stock of medicines required for corona. Scientists on Tuesday announced the discovery of an exquisitely preserved dinosaur embryo from an at least 66 million years. The fossil was discovered in Ganzhou, southern China and belonged to toothless ter theropod dinosaur or oviraptorosaur, which the researchers dubbed Baby Yanglang. Baby Yanglang measures around 27 centimeters long from head to tail and lies inside a 17 centimeter long egg at the Yanglang Stone Nature History Museum. Researchers believe the creature is between 72 and 66 million years old. The specimen was one of several egg fossils that were forgotten in storage for decades. Notably, the team hopes to study baby young lung in greater detail using advanced scanning techniques to image its full skeleton, including its skull bones. The UN Security Council on Wednesday unanimously adopted a U.S. proposed resolution to help humanitarian aid, aid reach desper desperate Afghans while seeking to keep funds out of Taliban hands. The resolution is first step by the UN after months of wrangling over how to avert a humanitarian catastrophe amid economic meltdown in Afghanistan. It was welcomed by the Islamists as a good step for months now. Observes have been warning that millions face a choice between starvation or migration during a combined food, food fuel and cash crisis throughout the bitter winter. The Security Council resolution allows aid to follow into the country for one year without violating international sanctions aimed at isolating the ta Taliban, whose regime is not recognized by the international community. Thank you viewers that's all for now for more uh, updates keep watching NL TV Sammanulaga Awas Nagaland TV Sop Manulaga Awas Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television sets as well. For Dimapur viewers, we are on channel number 10 in Global Chapter. And for Kohima and Mokokchung viewers, switch to channel number 138 on Hornbill Digital. For all news and updates,